Hey YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to a new adventure series, North America, with the Expedition Vehicle. We shipped the truck from Hamburg to the east of Canada, to Nova Scotia, Halifax. It took about two weeks. The first part of this video series will be a 4,400 kilometer road trip from Halifax to Denver, Colorado, where my wife Annette will join in two weeks. To pick up the vehicle, you first have to take an Uber to the east of the city, to the agent, then to the other side of the city to customs, and then to the port. It takes about an hour. Sometimes vehicles get damaged or broken into during transport, but our truck was fortunately all okay. I had to fill up with cheap Canadian diesel, at least compared to European prices, refill fresh water, and buy groceries before heading towards Quebec the same day from Nova Scotia. So, every big journey starts with the first kilometer. I'm on the highway, 4,400 kilometers to Denver, Colorado. Fortunately, we retrofitted air conditioning. It's over 30 degrees outside. No jet lag. By the way, trucks are allowed to drive over 100 kilometers per hour in the USA and Canada. Of course, the jet lag was still in my bones, so I didn't get very far on the first day and spent the first night unromantically in a parking lot. RV parking spaces are rather rare in Canada and the USA, so if you need to be quick, you can legally park in a Walmart or Home Depot parking lot. This is the nail polish remover from the women's section. The professional model, you just have to be careful not to rub too long, otherwise the paint will come off the cabin. This is the St. Lawrence River. It is 21 kilometers wide at this point, to the other side. I'm not sure if it's still a river or already the sea. From here, we continue west, always along the St. Lawrence River, to Quebec. I'm in beautiful Quebec and once again have a problem with the electrics in my car. There were various situations in Sweden. Everything was serviced again in Germany, so it should run perfectly, but it doesn't. The battery light came on, so I stopped tried a few things, the key won't come out again, it's a known wire, and it crackled in the fuse box. My impression is that one or two relays in there have been hit. I can pull all the relays except exactly two, I feel like they are melted in there. Now I'm at Freightliner, which is basically the successor, the Mercedes representative in Canada and the USA. They are quite busy but they will send a mechanic during the night. They work until half past midnight. I contacted Germany to see if anyone knows what the problem is. We might just pull these two relays, and if the fault is gone and the battery still charges, I could ignore it and have Annette bring two relays from Germany later. Did I mention that I have many friends all over the world? Most of them are mechanics. I have several in every country. I think Quebec is the most beautiful city in Canada. And why not use the waiting time for a city tour? I wondered why Google says three quarters of an hour for the new kilometers. Now I know why. Quebec is built on seven hills like Rome. Globocam in Quebec worked really hard to fix the problem. They removed and checked the alternator. Unfortunately, they could only hack it so I could continue driving. The generator needs a 24-volt signal to charge, and that's missing. So either a broken relay or a broken wire. They don't have 24-volt relays here, so I'll need some from Germany, and I can at least keep driving. Besides a decent discount, I also got safety glasses a cap and a hat for free. Very friendly. 
Yesterday it got very late. The plan is actually to drive 400 kilometers every day. You can do that well without exhausting yourself. Sometimes you still have to cook, shop, etc. Yesterday, I only left the truck service at 4 p.m. So, I only managed to cover 300 kilometers by 11 p.m. That's why today will be more. The next destination is Niagara Falls, and today's tour is 560 kilometers. By the way, the oversized transports here also drive over 100 kilometers per hour. To keep myself entertained on the long stretch, I listen to Spotify. There's always an ad from Cindy Lauper. She's advertising a medication for a disease I don't know. Cindy and I are not the youngest anymore, but I get this ad every five minutes, and always the same one. Holy crap, it gives you goosebumps. It looks so awesome. The Niagara Falls. By the way, only 25 to 50 percent of the available water flows over the waterfalls. The rest is diverted through power plants for electricity production. The first power plant at Niagara Falls is right next door and can be visited. Under the power plant building, it goes almost 60 meters straight down. The turbines were below and the generators were above. You can visit the old water outlet via an elevator and come out right at the foot of the Niagara Falls. A YouTube user pointed out the upcoming fireworks to me in the evening. Thanks for that. A goosebump experience. Ugh, that was more complicated than expected. I still had to get an I-94, which is some kind of special visa, and I had to loop around again. They asked all the questions again, where I leave the car, etc., etc., and now I'm officially in. Detroit is the car city of the USA, and Ford has its origins here and still has a development and production site. The Henry Ford Museum honors the founder. However, it is not just a Ford museum, but rather a large technology museum with impressive exhibits. The Model T was the first car manufactured on an assembly line. 15 million units were built. This was my first refueling of diesel in the USA. A gallon, about four liters, costs four dollars. That means a liter costs one dollar, 80 euro cents per liter, or 90. That's pretty cool. And it's good American fracking diesel. Attention! Whole houses. That's the third one back there. Here comes another one. Totally crazy. So you need good internet for initialization. You have to download the app, software update, etc., then credit card, blah, 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 until everything works. It takes half to three quarters of an hour. But I have 111 megabits down and four point something up. And with that, YouTube, Netflix, etc. work. I'm going to have a nice evening now. You could say, here stands father and son. I'm back at Walmart, and the Walmart staff just came out. About 10 people, they all greeted me with a handshake and saw the cars and were totally excited. So, somewhere here, is the third time zone I have crossed. East Coast, I was in the central time zone the whole time. And now, it goes into the west time zone. Forty-four hundred kilometers in ten days. Ahead is Boulder, and what you can see on the horizon are the foothills of the Rockies. 
Starlink. Starlink is working. Yesterday, I dismantled the entire setup to run the cable through. It was a mess, and at times it looked like I wouldn't get it back together before going to bed. It was 36 degrees outside, but thanks to the air conditioning, it was bearable. Now I've solved it relatively elegantly. Here comes a switch and an outlet, which I'll have a net to bring. Then you can turn it on with a click. The cool thing is, the Wi-Fi even reaches to the driver's cabin. So, theoretically, you would have internet while driving. I want to try that out in the coming days. So, this is what it looks like on the roof. I prepared the mount at home and then installed it here. This is Flagstaff Road, above Boulder, and the temperatures are much more pleasant. Down there, it's over 30 degrees, and here, it's t-shirt weather. The trip into the Rockies quickly turned into an adventure. The dirt road in the backcountry became slippery and muddy due to a thunderstorm, but I have all-wheel drive and am hardened by Iceland. There were still a few days until Annette's arrival in Denver, so I stayed on a campsite near Boulder. The temperatures were well over 30 degrees every day. Outdoor activities were only possible until about 11 a.m. After that, it just got too hot. The area has a relatively dense network of bike paths for the USA, which are well signposted and maintained. The adventure continues. They built a hack in Quebec that goes directly from the batteries plus pole to the alternator to bring the 24-volt signal there so it charges. But this apparently leads to the battery being discharged if the truck stands for several days, like here for three days. And the battery disconnect switch is useless because he didn't put it behind the disconnect switch, but directly to the battery. So if I have this again, I have to pull the fuse from the thing he built in. So, the battery was dead when I wanted to start this morning. The ADSC doesn't help in the USA. It's chargeable, which is tough. The neighbors who were here had to leave. Then I went to another neighbor who drove me with his motorcycle. He had a good idea. I should buy a 12-volt charger. I did that now. It doesn't get any better because the power supply is right here. And I much prefer that this crap happens here at a campsite with a power connection with a Home Depot around the corner. Then standing in the Arizona desert for several days and not being able to leave at all. Now, I hope the batteries are not deeply discharged. Unfortunately, the batteries were deeply discharged. Tuke's 140 ampere hours with 10 amps takes 28 hours to charge. So I bought a second charger and charged for 20 hours. That actually worked. With the help of the German LN2 forum, I was also able to find out where the problematic wire ends. And a truck mechanic nearby ran a new wire for me. And since then, the thing has been running. I am now very impressed. It costs $10, and you can get into almost any car. Tomorrow is steam day, then they run with steam. $4 more. Awesome. The Colorado Railroad Museum contains some really worthwhile exhibits. As almost everywhere in the USA, the work here is based on donations and volunteer work. I definitely wanted to visit the Red Rocks Amphitheater. It is located 16 kilometers southwest of Denver. It was fitted into a natural sandstone formation and opened in 1906 and, after some expansions, holds about 10,000 people. There are events almost daily, and the bronze statue of John Denver is, of course, not to be missed. Annette's arrival was now imminent. The robber and robber's cave had to be brought back to a woman-compatible state after two weeks. Cleaning, shopping, refueling, and personal care. <laughs> Denver Airport, 
fresh t-shirt, new cap, truck cleaned, shopped, and refueled. Annette is landing soon. I asked her, as a certified woman understander, if I should bring her flowers to the gate. She said, no, a cold beer. Such women don't exist anymore today. And out here, it's 40 degrees Celsius. I'm melting. So, we have moved from Denver Airport to Colorado Springs. From here, we will head to the Rockies tomorrow and then north to Yellowstone and Grand Teton National Park. But we will cover that in the next video. Over the next four weeks, I will be traveling with Annette. Bye.